comes. Oh yeah, she's a beauty. Look at that. <laughs> Super cool. Well, that's a location. What's up guys? Welcome back to another haunted adventure. My name is Sugar. And I'm Jenna. Pleasure. And today we are at the Randolph County Infirmary slash Asylum. This is awesome. Total epic location. We just got done doing the Blackford County Jail. Now we're going to do this. So we are each going to take a floor to begin with. Uh, we will be on separate floors but together in the building. Then we're going to do a floor together. <laughs> oh yeah. Super exciting. So, uh, I guess with that being said, let's go get him. The place is easy to navigate. If you look at it from above, it's shaped like a cross. So these two doors lead into two long parallel hallways. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. Oh, this is cool. So, the two long parallel hallways end at the front of the building and in a large open room at the other end, a community room or a dining room. Okay. So if you're trying to navigate, just get in a long hallway and head to one end. Down at that end, there is a the cross beam of the cross. Okay. Where Christ's hands would be. Gotcha. Chapels. Oh, perfect. Okay. There are four chapels in this building. Oh, wow. Okay. Sweet. And depending on the population, they could have four church services here on any given Sunday. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. The place is segregated by gender. Oh. So there's men's halls and women's halls. Right now, we're on the women's hall. Okay. Women's hall rooms are easy to tell. These rooms are bigger than they are on the men's side of the building. They're okay. They're deeper. They're about eight feet deeper. And they got here. pink doors. I don't know what the other ones have. Okay. So these rooms are deeper because these were initially intended for families coming in. They didn't start segregating the place until around 1919. Okay. Gotcha. Noah's room is here. Okay. And he's easy to find. Very easy. The rooms that have some kind of significance or we know the stories of usually have some kind of props. But people bring in toys for Noah because he is one of our more active spirits. Okay. And down here at the end is Doris's room. Well, this isn't Doris's room. This is the room that Doris the cook passed away in. That's right. That's what this and room she was. She collected dolls. So when she was brought in here the last couple of weeks, she asked for a doll collection to come in here with her. The dolls that you see in there on the bottom row of the shelving in there belong to Doris. Oh, she'd like our doll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Noah. Noah would probably like our doll, too. If you get confused about which side of the building you're on, just look out a residence window. Okay. If you can see where you parked your car, you're on the men's side of the building because boys and toys. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. <laughs> it's stupid yeah. mnemonic, but it helps. Community rooms in the men's hallway, mirror image of the women's side. There are stairs to the basement and all the floors at both ends of the building. So we'll just go down this one. When was this place built? This place was completed in 1899 and opened in late December of that year. Okay, cool. again we have the long hallways down here in the basement as well got it okay 
and into a large open room at one end of the thing. This is the men's dining room, and it does lead into the kitchen. This place is cool. Oh, wow. I wish my kitchen was this big. So this was where the residence meals were cooked. And the lady who did that for more than 70 years is Doris Addington. Her photo's on the tray there. Oh. So she came here when she was 11 mm -hmm. and became the apprentice cook. Um, but by the time she was, when she was 14 or 15, the head cook here, her name was Mary. Mary died. And Doris took on the duties of being the head cook when she was 14 or 15 years old. Gotcha. She passed away here. She, I believe she was 84 when she died. Oh, wow. This is where the stove was. Yes. That's so cool. when they closed the place down, it was being run as a nursing home, and they auctioned off most of the things that were in the building. So one of the artifacts that remains is the refrigerator over there. That was originally the ice box here at the asylum. It was brought in in 1899 and served as the freezer here until they electrified the building in the late 19-teens and into the early 1920s. And then the international company came in and turned that into an electric refrigerator. And one of the pieces of activity that we do get the water oh, it's even got her name. is the Balsa refrigerator. It's this noise. Oh. If you hear that, just people working. So. That's cool. Ida is next. And oh, yeah. you know Ida's story, and you don't tell her story in her room, so. So this is where she said she heard the hello mm -hmm. in the kitchen. She was, right. So she was sitting in front of Ina's room. It came from there. Yeah, it's probably Doris. Yeah. The, the basement wasn't generally used as residential space. They moved to Ida down it's there out of necessity. Because she was suffering from neural syphilis. Oh. And they were, they were afraid she was going to get hurt because for most of this place's history, it was a 350-acre working farm. Mm. Okay, so they were afraid she was going to get hurt, so they moved her to the basement because they could keep an eye on her. And this room actually has bars on the window. So it was built this way, and they used this to help make sure that Ida would be safe. So they would lock her in at night, and then during the day, they'd come in and they'd open the door and let her out because during the day, they could keep an eye on her. But we know what happened in this room ultimately. I, I like it that they have each one stage, so you know which one it is. Yes. That's what's nice. It does help. Okay. So, oh. down here, also in the basement, do you scry with mirrors? Huh? Do I need to scry with mirrors? No. Okay. But. If you get a hanger. <laughs> oh. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Like yeah, a mirror had, room, okay. Yeah, so we had some guests who discovered that this space was really good for scrying, and they started bringing in mirrors, and my boss has just finished it off, because by the time the guests had finished, I think there were four or five mirrors in here. Wow. So the boys just finished it off, and people use this for scrying. So down here in the basement is also the meat room, where they, which was used as a makeshift morgue during the 1920s during a cholera outbreak. Here in Randolph County, the meat room's on the other side here, so we're back in front of the building and heading down the parallel hallway. Oh, step there. Yes, it's a bit of a slope. Oh, wow. Oh, it's heavier here. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> oh, wow, this is the north. So during the 20s, this was a makeshift morgue here at the asylum during the cholera oh, epidemic. Wow. Um, they did store the bodies in the freezer after they'd been embalmed here. Um, and that is actually an artifact from the very first asylum here in Randolph County. It was built in 1851, and it was built on this foundation. But this is the original butcher block oh, wow. from 1851. So kind of a neat piece to have. There's wow. A butcher block. Uh-huh. <sighs> Yeah, it's where they take off the chicken's heads. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so other rooms of interest would be probably Lulu and the jail cell. Well, oh, that's right. There is a jail cell here, isn't there? Yeah. So we'll be heading up to the second <clears throat> floor. So Lulu is actually the reason they started segregating this place. Oh. So up until the time she came here, it was family stayed together. 
So she showed up here in 1914 with her stepdad, and she ended up pregnant oh. at the oh. age of 14. So Lulu had a rough time. She was here from 1914 until 1922. So is it safe to say her stepdad and pregnant yes. her then? It's disgusting. <laughs> uh, she, <laughs> he goes to jail, she gives birth to a child. We're not sure what happened, but something happened and it made her very vulnerable to men and a victim of men for the rest of her life. She ended up giving birth to three illegitimate children. Oh, wow. And this room, and this room here, were Lulu's. They had taken down the wall okay. between to create a nursery for Lulu and the babies. Now, the state ultimately declared her incompetent to care for the kids. They took them away. Oh. Um, they were sent to the local orphanage. All three kids got adopted by the same family out of Muncie. Their last name was Well, that's Hummel. good. And that family kept in contact with Lulu. Huh. Nearly unheard of even today, but for back then. Yeah. Um, so the kids grew up knowing their mother. That's but cool. Lulu's a presence here, and we think it's because she was here with her kids and she was happy. Yeah. So... Second floor here at the asylum, <clears throat> there were some troubles. Um, the segregation did work for most of this place's history. It became part of the culture of the place. Um, but during World War II, they were kind of left to their own devices out here. I mean, you got three quarters of the police department deployed overseas, and you got um, the people who are living here are third and fourth class citizens. It's not a nice thing to say, but it's just true. Sure. So they're not high on a priority list, so they're left to their own devices. So there's a judge here in Randolph County who retired in the 1930s, and he foresaw the possibility of the U.S. becoming involved in the war, and because he's politically connected, he knows everybody. Sure. But he moved out here. He didn't have a family, so he went to the county commissioners and got permission to move out here. Okay. He paid his own way. This was his retirement plan. Huh. So he moves in here in the 1930s. He feels like there might be problems with people being here in the, if we ended up in a war who would cause problems. He called them undesirables was okay. his word. Um, so he went to the superintendent and the superintendent said, you're right, let's go talk to the sheriff. And the sheriff said, if we end up in a war, you're going to be right, you're going to be on your own. I did think I heard something. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not going to have the manpower to help you. You need a solution for troublemakers. So, the solution behind the door over here. <coughs> so this was purchased in 1940 from the Randolph County Sheriff's Department and installed here on the second floor. So these rooms that you see that have the slanted wall at the back there, they're medical rooms, just like we saw down in the doll room. It had oh, that okay. slanted wall at the back. They're medical rooms, and all the medical rooms had toilet facilities attached. So this was installed in the men's medical room here on the second floor because they could move the toilet facilities into the cell. So the cell was used during the war. Um, so there's reports of thefts and a gang rape in the basement, a gang rape up in the attic, um, regular assaults, a couple of murders and nothing was ever investigated, nothing we can prove. I don't have any documentation except diary stories. Oh, wow. Telling about these things happening out here. So I can't prove to you that they happen, but when you have multiple diaries talking about the same things, right. it lends a little bit of weight to the right. stories. Okay, so that's the jail cell. And then down at the end of the hall is the champ's room. You guys should put little you guys should put little name things on their doors. His name is John Oliver Champ. In nineteen forty three he was eighty two years old. So he's here at the same time as the troublemakers during the war and he's eighty two. Well I know I'm sorry, he was eighty four. My apologies. He was eighty four. Um, he didn't much appreciate the shenanigans. So he could go next door to the judge, because right next door is the judge's room, or across the hall to the superintendent, let him know what was going on. Um, he's not winning a lot of friends amongst the right. troublemakers. 
So when fall house cleaning season came around, everybody in the building is supposed to clean the rooms, wash the windows inside and out. 84 year old John is not going to climb a ladder to wash his window. Right. So his solution, he had an agreement with the superintendent, just do the best you can and we'll call it good. So his solution was to open the window, sit down backwards, scoot out and pull the window down over his lap and then just wash up as high as he can and then come back in. And he'd been doing that for years. But in 1943, two people came in, opened the window while he was doing it and dropped him off the side of the building. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. This is Champ's room. And then we have one more floor in the building. And that is the attic. Love me some Maddox. Oh yes, you'll like this one. I love this place. I think I'm gonna move in. Oh wow! This could be a whole apartment. <laughs> wow! Wow! This is massive. So this space up here is being primarily used for food preservation and storage. So as it gets a harvest season, it gets really dry and hot up here. And then it's a perfect for drying out vegetables, herbs, garlic, things like that, gourds. So they're using this for food preservation and storage. They also let the kids come up here and play. Now there were originally dormers. You can see that this is newer wood here. So there were dormers that ran the length of the attic on both sides. So this place had a lot of windows and a lot of light. So this would have been fantastic for kids to play. Yeah. At the other end of the attic, I told you the jail cell was used, right? Yeah. Now, can I just put you in jail? Sure. Can I, really? I mean... Court? Yeah, you have to... Go to court first. You have to go to court, due process. You have yep. a right to a trial. Mm -hmm. Down at the other end of the attic, on the left there, at the alcove, they had a judge living here. They built a bench. Under the eaves, they built a jury box. They held trials up here in the attic during World War II. You'll see the little gavel down there for the judge. And some people think the judge is still up here in the attic keeping an eye on things. They've captured SLS footage of a figure down there. Oh, cool. Okay, so kids and the judge. Squeaking noises. You the birds. This. You see this? Oh. The vent? Oh, yeah. There's a fan. Some of them squeak. Oh, it's only like birds. So it might be that. It might be birds. Down at the other end is the cupola on top of the building. It is open. We have a lot of birdie friends. Sure. Um, so it might be birds. It might be these vents squeaking. So just so you know. Gotcha. You can debunk stuff. So that is the hot spot. That's super cool. I love it. You can go in the hot That's so neat. Up here. We just like historical stuff, period. Like even, you can come here and not get anything and still be excited to see it. Yes. Awesome. So cool. Okay. All right, so Jenna's going to take this floor. Are you excited? I'm scared. You're scared. You're going to be fine. We got walkie-talkies. Everybody's got theirs. Faja, which one are you taking? Attic. Going in the attic. All right. Yes. And catch a judge. Yeah. Get the judge. Head downstairs by Doris and Ida. That's my favorite floor. I like it. So, here we go. All right, taking off. Fajal's still getting ready. Fajal's gonna attempt to do this and the SLS together. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, hell yeah. <laughs> Honey, it's gonna be okay. I've never been alone before by myself. You're gonna be fine. We're in the same building with you. Yeah, but the walls are so creepy, it's like, what you typically would see in an old asylum, and it just, you know, scary. Creepy? Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna scare the shit out of me. Oh. I, this, it doesn't creep me out as much as the jail for some odd reason. Even walking with you, I have to like stay up close with everybody. I can't ever be in a room by myself. But. You got it. Okay. You meet back here at two? Sure. In an hour? Okay. All right. You got the walkie, honey. All right. You recording? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So you might hear footsteps in certain parts. 
really want to head down to the kitchen right away. I should probably turn the light on a little bit. I passed. I just let me just double check. I did. Here's Ida's room. Hey Ida. My name is Sugar. I came down here to visit you and Doris. It looks like people left you some really nice stuff. Dear Ida, thank you for the lovely time. From end of days paranormal. We enjoy our time with you. That's so nice. Look at all the stuff everybody left for you, Ida. So many people obviously care about you and I don't know. I, I thought I heard something. There are cars passing, but hmm. so they did say that, yeah, no matter the time of day here, um, they always get a lot of activity. So I'm going to try an EVP session um, with the recorder and um, see if we can get her to respond. Um, Ida was the one that uh, met her demise here in this cell. So I um, just want to see if she'll communicate. I think it's great. Um, and it's like, I don't know. She's probably lonely. She probably felt lonely because she was sick. So let's see if I can make friends. Oh, God. Guys, I'm... <clears throat> Super scared. But, um, I know I'll be safe, right? Nothing's gonna hurt me. Um, God's with me. Uh, oh, wow, look at that commode. Someone's commode. Shared commode, I'm sure. Um, this is really cool because this is like the luggage I bought for Sharona uh, last year for her birthday. It's identical. That's really cool. It's really neat to look at. It's a little bit freaky. Wow, look at that wheelchair. Hello? Someone left a little note in here. That's cool. Another good man and... I don't know, is that like a urinal or something? That's crazy. That kind of reminds me of... Um, Guys, TV. Pretty cool that all of these are peeling, but what has remained is 
the apple tree. Spies are going up to the attic. <clears throat> See if we can find the judge. My name is Faja. She's here to talk. Me no harm. Just so wondering if the judge is here. If you do hear any noises, any squeaks, those are air vents. They are open. They do squeak. And it is raining out too, so you may hear the rain on the roof. I do have a couple of devices on the floor, a little cat ball. Just touch that, it'll light up. So meter right there you can touch, make the lights go to red. I also have a recorder here that you can talk into. Is there anybody up here with me. All right. Well, I, uh, I'm sure you've seen this device before. And um, I'm going to hit record and put this on your bed. Again, my name is Sugar. If you want to talk to me, <clears throat> it would be great. You can talk into that device. You can talk into the square device I have in my hand. Or you could say something out loud, maybe make a noise. Say your name. Please feel free to contact me in any way. It's great being here. Just want to get to know you a little bit. First of all, can you tell me your name in that device so I know I'm speaking with you? Okay, I didn't get any either there. I do want to move down by Doris and then kind of invite Ida with if she wants to. So we'll see what she decides. Ida, I'm going to go down and visit Doris. You probably really like Doris's food. I heard she was a great cook. I'm sure she was. I know I would have loved to try her food. For sure. Looks like there was some woodworking going on in here. Yeah. Pretty cool. Oh, that's Jenna upstairs. I wonder what's back here. Probably the stairs where Jenna is. Door is. Looking for Doris. Hmm. 
Everybody always says places are only haunted in the nighttime. I don't believe that. Oh, that's the water. Doris. Doris, I'm hungry. So, I just wanted to introduce myself in case there's anyone here with me. My name is Jenna. I traveled here from Kakana, Wisconsin. Oh shit, that scared me. Um, I came with my family. We came out here to visit you guys and I heard there's a lot of history here. Tons and tons of people have lived in this home, which was called an uh, infirmary, an asylum, uh, county housing, and uh, I understand it's also where a lot of you maybe didn't have any mental issues going on, um, but you did have some rough times and you came here to get some shelter and some help and save some money to get out of here now what this thing is about I have no idea but uh, you're pretty freaky I'm not gonna lie but I think that was your intention is to freak people out right I'm gonna do my best uh, not to be afraid I'm not here to hurt you, and I'm sure you don't want to hurt me either, do you? So, like I said, my name is Jenna, and I am from Wisconsin, originally born and raised in Southern California. Um, I am a mother. I have two children teenagers so if you were here and you had children um, I too am a parent are there any children up here that would like to talk Pretty creepy. Is the judge up here with me? Sorry, guys, it is rainy. Raining, it is kind of noisy up here. Is there anybody up here that would like to talk? We mean no harm, Just want to become friends. Maybe we'll go down a floor. Maybe it's a little quieter. Can you make me some food, Doris? I'm really, really hungry right now. I haven't really eaten. I'm trying to get all of this in here. Guys, we're okay. Super hungry, Doris. Man. Is there any way I can get a meal? Is 
Could you come here, Doris, and have a talk with me? I have a device right here where you said, how to cut your vegetables, serve people some food. I heard you were really good at it. Wondering if you could sit here and come talk to me maybe and share some of your recipes and make me some dinner. Sugar. Can you make a noise or something, Doris? Let me know that you're here. I know it's early and I won't let him wake you. You should probably when we're up taking breakfast and everything by now. Visit me, Doris. I hope you're nervous. I mean, no harm. I hope. Hello? I feel like I'm not alone. I sincerely feel like someone's here with me. Um, I have this device in my hand. Uh, please feel free to reach out and introduce yourself to me. And let's uh, get to know each other a little bit better. So if you like, just go ahead and... Uh, Try to whisper me your name. Where you're from. And why you may have moved in here. Ooh, it's getting really heavy right here. Oh my gosh. Please, I, I, I'm here visiting in peace. Very nice person. I don't really have any mental issues. I'm not gonna hurt you. However, I do have a bit of anxiety, so please be easy on me, okay? My name is Faja. Just here to uh, communicate. I mean, no disrespect, no harm. Is there anybody up here with me? Is somebody up here? I just heard like a whine or maybe a cry. I'm not really sure what Faja heard, 
I thought it sounded like his stomach, but he didn't seem to acknowledge that it was. So I'm not really sure if this is what he heard or not, but I'm going to leave it to you to be the judge. Is somebody up here? I just heard like a whine or maybe a cry. Could you make that sound again? My left ear is ringing, and I don't know why. So, the side that I'm on is where all the men's housing was. They did separate the ladies and the men. or something. Well, literally the sound when I walked down the hall and my feet creak, I was just standing in place and I heard that same creak. Oh shit. <clears throat> Who's here? Who's here with me? I'm gonna close stop right there, I suppose, for a moment and um. Hello? This room's a trip. Maybe the kids come in here. Hello, kids? <laughs> 